people message us yesterday. We had a ton of pictures coming in of this unique looking cloud that a lot of people have never seen before. Bro, look at these clouds. What is going on? What is that? Throughout human history, civilizations have been captivated and occasionally unnerved by celestial phenomena, ranging from comets and eclipses to meteor showers and auroras. However, the current unfolding events are unprecedented in their scale and intensity. From unexplainable meteor showers to bizarre atmospheric anomalies, the world watches with shock as these celestial events unfold. What secrets do these cosmic occurrences hold, and what implications might they have for the future of humanity? Join us as we explore the mysteries of the heavens like never before. Frightening Anomalies in the Sky In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus mentioned crazy events, nations fighting, earthquakes, famines, and wild signs in the sky. He even talked about himself coming back, surrounded by clouds and power. So what's the deal? Are we seeing the beginning of something massive? He told his followers to look up because something big was coming, something that would bring them redemption. The Bible is clear. Unusual things happening in the sky are like a preview before Jesus comes back again. Now, folks are wondering if those strange sights we're seeing lately are part of this big finale. In recent times, there have been some unusual lights spotted in the sky, catching people by surprise. Some folks say those lights are just reflections from tiny satellites launched by a company called SpaceX. But many disagree. They say these lights move in weird ways, unlike regular satellites. Regardless of what they are, Jesus talked about all sorts of signs happening before his return, and we're seeing some of them now. Supermoons, blood moons, and more stuff falling from space are becoming common. Even if science can explain some of these things, there's a deeper question. Could they also be messages from God? The prophet Daniel said God is in charge of everything, even the stars and the seasons. Some Christians brush off these signs as nonsense, but Jesus himself talked about them. So, we need to pay attention to not getting lost in all the fake news and fancy pictures out there. Sure, we need to figure out what's true, but the main thing is to stay spiritually awake and ready. Recently, a rare and captivating cloud phenomenon unfolded in the skies above Florida, leaving many residents shocked. These extraordinary cloud formations, known as hole-punch clouds, had people gazing skyward in wonder. The videos capturing this spectacle depict what seems like footprints etched in the sky, resembling delicate wisps within a vast, empty circle. These formations, resembling giant rings, stood out as unusual and fascinating, defying typical cloud patterns. So, what exactly are these hole-punch clouds? They occur when supercooled water in clouds suddenly evaporates, leaving behind a conspicuous gap in the sky. Typically, they are formed when disturbed by passing planes. As aircraft traverse through supercooled clouds, the suspended ice crystals within them gather and descend into drier air below, where they evaporate, creating these distinctive voids. This phenomenon is rarely seen, making it all the more captivating. The appearance of these hole-punch clouds initiates a domino effect, spreading across a significant expanse of the sky. Initially spotted over Dunan, the phenomenon quickly spread, manifesting over a large area. Known also as Kavum clouds or fall streak holes, they resemble sinkholes in the sky or crop circles crafted from cotton clouds or floating glazed donuts. In late January 2024, a similar occurrence captivated onlookers over the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Mysterious sinkholes or crop circles were spotted in the cloud. These hole-punch clouds continue to fascinate us with their otherworldly allure, reminding us of the ever-surprising wonders of nature. Let's dive into the first question. How do streak holes form in the sky? Exploring the mysteries of cavum clouds. There's a natural process that leads to the creation of ring-like clouds, but most often they appear after human activity, especially aircraft movements. These phenomena, known as cavum clouds, happen in mid-level clouds made of super-cooled droplets that don't freeze into ice because they lack tiny particles for crystallization. 
When an aircraft flies through such a cloud at a certain angle, it kickstarts the crystallization process. This causes a decrease in particle density, forming a visible hole in some areas. As density drops, temperatures sharply decrease, causing supercooled droplets to freeze without small particles. The falling ice crystals often leave wispy trails called virga, which never reach the ground. Various factors like cloud thickness, air temperature, and wind conditions affect the length of these clouds. If planes pass through at a sharp angle, they can create long canal clouds with lengthy virga trails. For instance, the Kavam recently discovered near Florida's western coast is linked to intense air movements around Miami Airport and favorable temperature conditions. Researchers haven't ruled out that from certain angles, these cloud holes might seem unusual, resembling traces of UFOs or something spiritual, adding a touch of mystery to the skies. So, what exactly makes it seem like the sky is falling? Well, let's break it down. Inside the clouds, ice crystals start forming. As they grow heavier, they eventually fall, creating gaps in the layer of clouds. These falling ice crystals leave trails of precipitation in the center of these gaps, making fall streak holes stand out from regular cloud formations. Now, let's take a trip back in time. What do historical records say about these peculiar cloud formations? Although they were considered rare when they first appeared in Florida, they're not entirely new. Meteorologists have spotted these strange cloud holes in publications dating back to the 1940s. A picture published in a 1968 edition of Weatherwise magazine captured a fall streak titled Hole in Cloud, suggesting these formations have been observed for quite some time. Initially, airplanes were thought to play a role in creating these holes. Additionally, many rainbows have been seen within these holes, like one observed in Australia in 2014. Scientists have been captivated by these phenomena, conducting extensive research to uncover their mysteries. Studies conducted by scientists at the University Corporation for Atmospheric Research and NASA's Langley Research Center in 2010 and 2011 linked these holes to passing airplanes and the freezing of supercooled water droplets. They also discovered that if a plane passes through the cloud at a shallow angle, elongated holes known as canal clouds can form. However, despite these explanations, many people remain unconvinced. Some believe that what they're witnessing is more than just a natural occurrence. It seems like something is landing from the skies. But wait, the strangeness doesn't stop there. If you think clouds shaped like footprints are odd, well, there's more intriguing stuff to explore. From Kelvin Helmholtz clouds to moon halos. In Florida, yet another strange occurrence was noted. Above the rooftops, there appeared a wavy cloud formation, similar to ocean waves. This peculiar cloud pattern is known as a Kelvin-Helmholtz cloud. While it's uncommon to see these clouds in Florida, they are more often observed in areas with nearby mountains. But what stirred up this sight in a place devoid of mountains? It was wind shear, a term describing changes in wind speed with height. In this case, stronger winds higher in the atmosphere acted like a sculptor, shaping the top of the cloud into those distinctive waves. Truly a bewildering sight. But the day didn't end there with cool cloud sightings. People in Kerr County witnessed a ring-like effect encircling the moon, a phenomenon known as a moon halo, similar to sun halos seen during the day. A moon halo is caused by a thin layer of high-altitude clouds composed of tiny ice crystals. As moonlight passes through these ice crystals, it gets refracted, creating a prism effect and forming a ring-shaped light around the moon. Imagine looking up and seeing this mysterious ring of light illuminating the night sky. Before encountering these fascinating sights, people were treated to another captivating phenomenon, a peculiar wall of clouds resembling a mountain range. This unusual cloud formation was spotted over Baltimore, presenting an awe-inspiring spectacle in the sky. The sky was divided in half by a massive wall of clouds, creating a stark contrast between the light blue and white upper portion and the darker gray lower part. Some observers likened the clouds to towering mountains or a colossal wave about to crash down, evoking a sense of the edge of the universe. Others compared it to a glitch in the sky as if it hadn't finished loading properly. 
Experts suggest that this unusual formation might have been caused by a nearby weather phenomenon called an inversion. Normally, warmer air sits near the Earth's surface with cooler air above, but during an inversion, this pattern reverses, trapping cooler air near the ground while warmer air rises. Sometimes, this can result in unique cloud formations. Now, let's travel to Indonesia, where an extraordinary natural event has been revealed. The Divine Revelation in the Clouds a cloud formed a striking resemblance to what appeared to be Jesus Christ extending one arm. This astonishing sight sparked intense discussions among observers, with some seeing it as a profound proof of the divine's magnificence. They viewed it as a spiritual sign or message from above, showcasing the mysterious ways in which the divine can reveal itself in the world. Adding to the celestial wonder of this phenomenon was the presence of the sun in the background, casting its radiant light upon the cloud, enhancing its celestial beauty. The scene became even more breathtaking, especially for those with strong religious or spiritual beliefs. The unique shape of the clouds, combined with the sunlight shining through them, created a sight that seemed almost magical, captivating the imagination of believers and non-believers alike. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus spoke to his disciples about the events that would happen before his return. He mentioned terrifying occurrences and great signs from heaven. Revelation 1 says, Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. This connection of Jesus coming on the clouds links Revelation to other parts of the Bible where heavenly events are depicted, whether as acts of judgment or mercy. In Isaiah 19-1, there's a proclamation regarding Egypt. Look, the Lord rides on a swift cloud and is coming to Egypt. Egypt's idols will tremble before him and Egypt will lose heart. Clouds play a significant role in the Exodus story as well. During the Exodus from Egypt, the Israelites were led by a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night. This divine manifestation provided guidance and protection for the Israelites as they journeyed through the wilderness toward the Promised Land. According to the biblical narrative in the book of Exodus, the pillar of cloud symbolized the presence of God among His people. It served as a visible sign of God's guidance, leading the Israelites on their journey and providing them with direction. The pillar of cloud also shielded the Israelites from the scorching desert sun during the day. At night, the pillar of fire illuminated their path and provided warmth and security. The presence of the pillar of cloud demonstrated God's faithfulness to his covenant with the Israelites and his commitment to leading them to freedom and salvation. Clouds not only symbolize God's presence and power, but also represent judgment and blessing. Isaiah speaks of destruction, followed by God's rescue of Egypt as the people turn to the Lord through Christ. This shows that God's judgment from the heavens is also an act of mercy for those who seek Him. However, these verses leave a lasting impression and bring our focus back to Egypt and God's history with its people. They remind us of Pharaoh's stubbornness and the miraculous transformation that took place. God's actions often involve destruction followed by salvation, as seen in Christ's death on the cross, a clear example of this pattern. Similarly, biblical figures like Moses, who went from a privileged life in Egypt to becoming a humble shepherd before becoming a leader of his people, or the man possessed by demons whom Christ saved, illustrate this pattern of destruction and restoration. Even Lazarus, who died and was raised by Christ from the tomb, exemplifies this theme. When Christ returns on a cloud, it may signal a period of suffering before restoration. In the Bible, clouds sometimes symbolize judgment or blessing. Revelation 17 depicts both darkness and light, indicating the dual nature of God's actions. While Christ will ultimately destroy those who reject Him, believers will be raised to eternal life with Him. Cloud imagery in the Bible connects Jesus with the Old Testament and His promised return. Jesus himself spoke of coming in clouds with power and glory, reinforcing the message found in Revelation. This strengthens the credibility of John's account in Revelation and emphasizes that it is the Lord who speaks through him. Let's delve into the meaning of Revelation, Jesus Christ's majestic return.
This coming is deeply personal and involves clouds where every eye will see him. He described the grand and magnificent manner in which he will arrive, using clouds as his chariots to strike terror into his enemies. The imagery of clouds, darkness, thunder, and lightning symbolizes the vengeance he will enact. After Jesus gave his disciples the Great Commission, he ascended before their eyes, concealed by a cloud. As they watched, two angels appeared and assured them that Jesus would return in the same manner. The mention of clouds at both his ascension and return emphasizes the majesty and power of God and Jesus' role in it. This understanding sheds light on another image in Revelation often misunderstood. The redeemed seated on the clouds, singing with harps. This imagery symbolizes our participation in God's heavenly might through Jesus' resurrection and ascension. What if Jesus Christ truly appeared? If natural phenomena are God's way of revealing himself to us, what would his actual coming be like? God desires your salvation and communicates through various means to guide you toward a better life. Are you attuned to these messages and willing to change? Sometimes, even Christians wonder if they'll recognize Jesus when he returns. Perhaps they haven't understood or read Revelation properly. Revelation 1.7 teaches us that Jesus won't return to earth and spend time mingling before dealing with Satan and bringing his people home. He won't be born again as a child, but will leave his place at the right hand of God, where he has been since ascending to heaven. Jesus is currently interceding for us at God's right hand. When he returns, he will be visible and recognizable to everyone. There will be no mistaking who he is, his power, or why he came. During the tribulation, Christians will yearn to witness this sight. Before Christ's return, the sun will darken and the moon won't give its light. It's then that Christ will emerge through the sunless sky on a cloud, reminding us that he is the light. Despite the gathering clouds of destruction, his light will shine through. His return will be breathtaking, magnificent, unmistakable, and dramatic, with the heavens as his backdrop. He will fill the hearts of those suffering for his name's sake with joy and unimaginable relief. Just like a rain cloud swelling over the desert, Christ's return will bring relief and hope. The most crucial aspect of Revelation 1 is that Jesus is coming back and every person will recognize him. The Bible serves as a warning to those who don't believe in Christ for salvation. Jesus will return to fulfill his promise to remove darkness from the earth. This scene also serves as encouragement for Christians who will one day rejoice saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. The significance of clouds appearing in biblical scenes is profound. While we often appreciate the beauty of a day based on the clear sky and sun, Scripture urges us to view clouds as symbols of God's glory and presence. Throughout the Bible, clouds are used to signal God's immediate presence in time and space. This is a theme that hasn't always received enough attention, yet the scriptures teach us much about the symbolic and redemptive significance of clouds. One notable instance of clouds playing a vital role in redemption history is seen in the flood narrative. Rainbows, tokens of divine guidance. After Noah and his family stepped off the ark, God placed his rainbow in the clouds as a reminder of his covenant mercy. This act foreshadowed the coming Redeemer and served as a symbol of transcendence and imminence. They symbolize both the glorious presence of the Lord and His imminent closeness to us. The Apostle John describes a rainbow encircling the throne of Christ, signifying God's promise of mercy from His heavenly throne. Significantly, God places His rainbow in the clouds, echoing His covenant promise with Noah. This promise assures that whenever a cloud appears, the rainbow shall remind God of His everlasting covenant with all living creatures, ensuring that no flood will ever destroy life again. In the Exodus narrative, God led His people out of Egypt and through the wilderness with a pillar of cloud. This cloud served as a guiding light, showing God's continual presence and protection. Moreover, it taught them to trust in the Lord's guidance, even when the path ahead seemed uncertain. Though they couldn't see beyond the cloud, they learned to rely on God's presence to lead them safely to their destination. 
The arrival of the Lord in the pillar of cloud marks the first instance in Scripture where clouds symbolize His presence. The psalmist poetically describes how Jehovah rides upon the clouds like a chariot, emphasizing their significance. Clouds are likened to the dust stirred by His feet, showcasing their connection to the divine. In the biblical story of Mount Sinai, clouds played a pivotal role in revealing God's presence. When God descended upon the mountain, it was shrouded in a cloud, signifying His arrival. As Moses ascended the mountain to receive the covenant revelation, a cloud covered its peak, indicating God's presence. The people recognized that the Lord had come to dwell among them when they saw the cloudy pillar descending upon the tabernacle. Additionally, God manifested His presence to the priest over the Ark of the Covenant, specifically above the mercy seat. During Israel's journey through the wilderness, their movements were guided by the movements of the glory cloud. Whenever the cloud covered the tabernacle, signifying God's presence, the Israelites would continue their journey. However, if the cloud remained stationary, they would wait until it lifted before proceeding. This pattern mirrored God's descent and ascent from Mount Sinai, emphasizing His ongoing interaction with His people through Moses. Just as God led His people through their journey to the Promised Land with a guiding cloud, He also revealed His presence through a cloud at the Transfiguration event. These instances foreshadowed the coming of God in the person of Jesus. Jesus is described as the embodiment of God's glory, dwelling among His people. He descended and ascended to lead and guide us to our eternal home. The Transfiguration event vividly illustrates this concept. Jesus took Peter, James, and John to a mountain to witness His glorious transformation. Moses and Elijah, representing the Law and the Prophets, appeared alongside Jesus, affirming His role as the mediator of the New Covenant. Just as Moses experienced God's glory on Mount Sinai, the disciples saw the radiance of God shining through Jesus. Luke recounts how a cloud overshadowed them, instilling fear in the disciples. As they entered the cloud, they heard a voice declaring Jesus as the beloved Son of God. This divine declaration emphasized Jesus' unique role in God's plan for salvation, affirming His eternal relationship with the Father. Looking back on the event many years later, Peter vividly recalled the moment when God the Father spoke from the glory cloud on the mountain. This incident highlighted the significant role of clouds in various stages of Christ's journey, including His ascension and anticipated return. The ascension of Christ following His resurrection is another key moment where clouds feature prominently. Jesus led His disciples to a high mountain where He ascended enveloped by a cloud. This imagery echoes the prophecy of the Son of Man ascending on the clouds of heaven as foretold in Scripture. Clouds serve as a symbol of God's presence throughout redemptive history. As believers, we find comfort in reminding one another that Jesus will return. Clouds, mentioned from the post-flood era to the parousia, symbolize God's imminent presence. So, rather than lamenting cloudy days, we should pause to reflect on how they remind us of God's promise and the anticipation of Jesus' return. Apart from signs in the clouds, there are other things to watch for regarding Jesus' return. Strange Insights into Jesus' Prophecies When His disciples asked about the signs of His coming while on the Mount of Olives, Jesus mentioned that there would be wars and rumors of wars, among other things. Let's break down what's happening here. Wars, famines, and earthquakes have been occurring for over 2,000 years. But latly, they seem to be getting more intense. Jesus talked about these signs warning us not to be fooled. He repeated this warning several times because as we approach the end, there's a big risk of being misled both inside and outside the church. Some people might claim to be saviors during times of trouble, but they're deceivers. We've seen examples of false saviors leading people astray, promising deliverance but ending in tragedy. When there are more problems, there tend to be more false saviors. But Jesus tells us not to freak out when we hear about new wars or disasters. He said something remarkable. These events are like birth pains, not the end of everything. They signal that something new is coming into the world. This changes everything. Instead of being scared by disasters, we should see them as signs of a new beginning. They're like the pain of childbirth, bringing forth a new world. So, we should sympathize with those suffering, but remain hopeful. 
We're looking forward to the birth of a new world, so we're not shaken by the problems around us. Another sign of Jesus' return doesn't emerge from worldly events, but from changes within the church. While disasters around the world serve as the initial warning, the second sign involves shifts within the church itself. Similar to how Jesus divided the first sign into three parts, wars, earthquakes, and famines, he does the same for the second sign, all of which unfold within the church. Firstly, persecution will rise, leading to widespread hatred against Christians across nations. Secondly, there will be a notable decline in the size of the church as many people's love for God wanes amidst the pressures of persecution. This decline may include the departure of nominal Christians and even some true believers. However, amidst these challenges, the third part of the sign brings a surprising revelation. The gospel will reach every racial group. Despite the shrinking size of the church, a purified remnant will spread the message of Christ to the ends of the earth, impacting the world profoundly. False prophets may emerge during this time, offering deceptive teachings that promise peace and comfort instead of challenging truths. Jesus advises believers to remain steadfast and not be swayed by these false teachings. Perseverance until the end is the key to salvation. But why will the church face such opposition and decline? In short, Jesus advises us not to panic or be disturbed. Instead, we can even find reasons to rejoice because these events indicate that something new and better is on the way. The reason lies in the fact that good and bad individuals coexist, and as they near maturity, the tension between them increases. Therefore, it's natural for Christians to face significant pressure in the end times. Christians often feel like outsiders in society, which can lead to hatred towards them. Since Jesus stood out from the crowd, he faced hostility, as mentioned in John 15. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Being despised is never easy. This leads us to another sign of the end times, which is the distress of Jerusalem. This leads us to another sign of the end times, which is the distress of Jerusalem. Geographically, this distress will be localized. Jesus refers to prophecies from Daniel, particularly mentioning the abomination of desolation three times. What's the significance of this? It refers to a person, someone who positions himself in the holy city of God, claiming divinity and rejecting any authority above his own. This tyrant's arrival will have worldwide consequences, yet his focus will be on Jerusalem, the city of God. Then Jesus mentions that another sign of his coming will follow immediately. This will serve as a clear indicator of his imminent arrival, allowing us to be prepared. When this sign appears, there will be no risk of deception from false prophets or messiahs. It will happen too swiftly. What will occur is that all natural light will vanish. The sun will darken and the stars will fall. This event is foretold throughout the Bible. Isaiah describes it vividly, likening the heavens to a rolled up carpet with the stars falling like withered leaves from a vine or foliage from a fig tree. With natural light gone, only artificial light will illuminate the earth. People may wonder what's happening, but Christians will recognize it as the awaited moment. The sun, stars, and moon will cease shining just before this significant event. God will dim the heavenly lights to prepare for the brilliance of His return, marked by lightning. Then, He will descend on the clouds back to earth, where we will meet Him. This won't occur in a stadium, as there isn't one large enough to accommodate such a gathering. Instead, we will meet Him in the air, which will suffice. Isn't that an incredible prospect? When we witness all these events unfolding, we'll know He's at the gates, about to enter. Jesus then simplifies things with an analogy about a fig tree. He explains that just as you know summer is near when a fig tree's twigs become tender and its leaves sprout, similarly, when we see these signs, we'll know his arrival is imminent. What are your thoughts on the extraordinary phenomena seen in the sky worldwide? Let us know your opinion in the comments below. And if you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.